let's let's start. Um, well, I'm Jordi Marina. I'm the technical lead of uh, the NFT project. NFT project is an identity project that tries to solve uh, uh, self-sovereign identity in a scalable manner, in an accessible manner, so that's available for the users. Once that everybody be able to be uh, a certification authority by itself, and we want to do that in a privacy by default and by design. That's the main goal of the item three. In this, when we talk about the scalability of this, when we want this to, system to be scalable, uh, we have a piece that we call it the trusted, the trusted relayer. That mainly is a piece that puts a lot of claims, and we need that this relayer, uh, well, you don't have to trust it so that you can achieve it. Okay? And for doing this uh, relayer, we, we are using or we have to use a technology that's mainly the, the, the ZK rollup. Okay, so we decided in item three to implement also the ZK rollup because most of the pieces are exactly the same. Okay, so in this presentation mainly I'm gonna talk about the ZK rollup, how, how we work, how we work the implementation that we are building right now and explain some of the details of this. Okay, so let's start. Well, this is just a, a little bit uh, um, of a spoiler. Uh, this is the results that we are gonna that, that that theoretically are possible with this system. It's important important to see that this is just an Ethereum 1.0. Is we are not talking here in Ethereum 2.0, or we're not talking about anything. Just is ju just using uh, Ethereum Ethereum 1.0 in the lower layer. Okay, so let's see how we achieve these results. What's the general idea of the roll-up idea. Here is, we have a kind of sidechain, like Plasma, if some of you have been using. Uh, in this sidechain, we have a, you know, a database of balances. All these balances is, um, you know, is a state. All these states, we can create like a Merkle tree, a Merkle tree, and we have a root, we have a hash of all these states. And in this state, we have a set of transactions that we, that we, create, that we put in a batch, and in each batch, we create a new state. So we process a set of transactions for each for each batch. And the, the thing here is that in the in the in the blockchain, in general, we just put this state. Okay? So in Plasma, for example, this is um, how we guarantee that this state is valid, how we guarantee that these transactions are processed in the right order, in the right way, that there is no double spending, that everything work, uh, it's exactly it fits. So in Plasma there is this gaming stuff, in zero in Zika in Zika rollup, mainly what we do is besides the next next state, uh, besides the next um, um, state, we also put a proof that this state is valid. This is a zero knowledge proof. Okay? So here is the the key piece, the key technology that makes this enable. This is the Zika Snorks. The important part here is the S, that's just from succinct. That means that we can generate a proof that maybe 1,000 or even theoretically 1 million transactions are valid from one state to the other. So we have one 256 bytes, just the hash of a state. We go to the next state, 256 bytes, and we can add the proof, that proof that's valid. And this proof, it can take long to generate, but in order to verify, it's time constant. In 10 milliseconds, don't matter how many transactions we are processing, in, ten, in, in, sorry, in 10 milliseconds, we can verify that, uh, that, uh, that proof. And that's the, the key part of all the, the, the roll-up stuff. Okay? Here, we, the system is like perfect, but we, there is a, an important problem that needs to be solved here. And it's what happens if this operator, that can be decentralized, that then we will see how it works, but what happens if this operator just uh, computes a new state that's actually a valid state with some valid transactions, but what happens if these transactions are not available? Nobody knows what are those transactions. This is what's called the data availability problem that I'm sure many of you have been hearing. So the idea is that we need to guarantee that this data is available. In this case, in this implementation, of course this data can be put in, in many places, but in this implementation what it does is it put the minimal data of this information, the from, to, and the amount, that's it. We put it that in the same chain. So we put it in the data, 
In the data field of a transaction, we are putting a set of all the transactions that are putting there. That's a lot of data there, but that's when the, we will see the calculus and we will see that that's not that much. Okay, so that's the main, the main thing. Of course, we are trying to compress a lot this, this, this data in order to have more transactions. Okay, so let's go a little bit in detail of how this circuit works. When I mean circuit, how we generate this proof? We generate this proof, circuit mainly is what it is, it's a deterministic program. It's a program that we put an input, we do the computation, we have an output, in this case it's the new root, and we prove that actually the input matches the, matches the, the output. Okay, so this is the, 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 the proof, the zero knowledge. Mainly the circuit has a, you know, a set of, pro, of transactions processors, so we have a, the old root, we process the transaction, we have a new, a, new, a new root, process the other transaction, have a new root, and maybe, I don't know, 2,000 transactions, and then we have uh, the, new, the new root. Okay, so let's zoom in in one of those transactions processors, what we have here. So here are the main, the main pieces of this, uh, of this circuit. First, we have a signature verification. This is very important because by design of the circuit, we don't need to store the signature on chain. The signature is a very big piece of data that we need to put. But verifying that, this, the signature can be off chain. The transactions can be included, but by design, they will not be valid if uh, there is no, ex no signature that, uh, if, if does not exist in the signature that's valid for that transaction. But if it's valid, it happens, and if, if it is, so we don't need to store the signature, so this is important, okay? Then we have, uh, of course, we need to modify the state of the sender, of the state of the receiver, uh, of the receiver, um, and so we, we, we have this process of the Merkle tree processor, so that we are mainly, while we are just uh, updating this Merkle tree with different states. We need to have two of them, from the sender and from the receiver. And of course, we have all the logic of the transaction processing. Here is, we guarantee that there is no double spends, that we have enough money to send, and all that logic. Uh, so that's made very much the picture of the circuit. You see here, it's important to see the input that there are, of course, there is public inputs, like the old root. Uh, there is, um, Parts of them that are also public, there's a front to an amount, that's a minimum part that needs to be uh, uh, available for computing the new state. And then there is a lot of private inputs, that's the current state, that the only needs to be is uh, very be verified with the road. Okay? So let's see how this rollup would work. What kind of transactions? Imagine that we start a new rollup, we have an empty, we have an empty room. The first thing that we can do is do deposits. So mainly how it would work, you will send, you will take a token, system works in many, in any tokens, so it's multi-token system, so you can send the tokens, Ether or whatever, to a smart contract, and the rollup will create a special transaction that's a deposit rollup. That mainly what it does is creates a new uh, leaf in the, in, the, in the state with the initial amount that you are sending here. Okay, so you would, the people would just Get in, in, move either to the to the to the to the to the side chain. Okay. Then we have the normal of chain transactions that are mainly just uh, transferring from one account to the other account. Of course, needs to be the same coin and you know all the all the logics in there. And then we have the exit. How the exit works? The exit mainly is uh, just sending the money to zero to to zero x zero. So you send the money to the zero address, and this will, um, mainly what it will do is, this will create like another tree for each batch. We have a, like a separate tree of uh, exits uh, that, uh, uh, so you are sending that to, that to that tree. So we are constructing this tree of exits. So with this, from the smart contract side, again in the main chain, we can withdraw. We prove that we have a leaf in this exit tree, we mark it, we flag it as a uh, withdrawal, and we get all the, and, and, and we get the money back. So here we see the full picture, how we deposit, we move inside, and then we exit the stuff. Of course we can do, we can do other, you know, we can mix things, we can mix between uh, on-chain and off-chain transactions. For example, we can force 
an on-chain uh, we can force a, a transfer from an on-chain transaction. This is very convenient. For example, if a smart contract wants to uh, do a, a transfer inside the other chain, and the last one probably is the most difficult one is that we can load, so we can uh, deposit on top of another or an account that's inside, and maybe doing a, a transfer in the same. As you can see here, there is always two. Uh, there is always two uh, Merkel tree processors. In general, it's from the sender and from the receiver, but you are using accordingly depending on the transaction that, that we have. Okay? So we explain a little bit how the exit mechanism works. Um, ready? So let's talk about the operator. Okay? Who's forging these badges? Who's, who's creating this? Who's creating these proofs? Well, what we do here is, okay, we have a lot of logs. We define that a slot is a number of logs. Let's say, for example, 20 blocks. And we define an error that's maybe a set of slots. Let's say maybe 10, uh, uh, 10 slots. Okay? So here you, it works very much like a proof of a stake. So you set up, you, you just put some stake in, in the... You just put your mistake, so you will be able to forge some of the blocks. So when you put a stake, you will start, so you will register for ERA plus two, so for two errors in front of them. Okay? And for each error, there is a raffle. Okay? Uh, the raffle happens uh, like one ERA before. Okay? And how the raffle is done? Well, the raffle is, uh, it's uh, the random number, the way of generating the random number mainly is, uh, uh, well, the operators they commit, so they they create this uh, this side, they they create this um, um, line of uh, well this chain of hashes. So I create the hash of the hash of the hash of the hash of the hash. I commit to the last one, and then for every four for every block that's uh, that's forged, it uh, reveals the last one. So the just the previous one, the previous one, the previous one. So it needs to be matched with the next one. So it's a pre pre it's it's already committed. Uh, random number and the raffle is made with a hash of all the all, of all these uh, committed random numbers uh, from all the blocks in the in each in each era. So it's quite random uh, on this. So um, here is uh, the chances that you. Uh, Get, are assigned to a specific uh, slot to get uh, to, to be able to uh, forage blocks are according to the quantity of stake that you are putting. Actually, it's a little bit more complex. It's maybe it's just like a square or it's like a x to the one dot one, one dot two. We'll see. This is a proportional part. Maybe we want that the people that concentrate. But well, it's not the same. For example, um, it's not the same. For example having one staker with one, uh, 10 stakers with one ether each or one staker with 10 ether. Actually, the chances would be the same, but in one you would risk just 10 ethers, and in the other would risk just one ether. So we are uh, compensating the accumulation. The people that are uh, staking more will have an extra just for accumulating that. And we are doing that by just uh, creating this, um, this effective stake on, on that. Okay. Yeah, uh, one important thing. Once you are assigned to a slot, in that slot, the operators can mine, can uh, forge as many uh, as many batches as they want. So that's an interesting thing because they can, if they have enough power to generate batches, that's good for them. So this is some incentive that's going on in there. And another important characteristic here is the, the kind of uh, pipelining. So. The, the idea is that the, the, the blocks are not uh, forged, so the blocks can so the, the blocks cannot be uh, needs to be committed uh, before a specific time in the slot. So in the last part of the slot, you cannot commit to new blocks. You can uh, forge blocks that are committed previously in the beginning of the slot, but you cannot uh, commit to new blocks. This allows to the next operator, the one that's coming in the next slot, to start. Uh, to start mining, to start uh, computing the proof for, for, for this, okay? Um, important, the, the proof is very, very parallelizable. Parallelizable in, 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 in two ways. One is that 
uh, imagine that I have a processor that's a computing a proof. Uh, well, if I have the uh, a state here, I can start computing the, the proof, but maybe in the computing the proof, I can forge another block and start computing maybe in another processor the, the proof. That's one way of parallelizing. But another way of parallelizing is just that the proof computation just by itself is very parallelizable itself. So maybe it's more convenient to put all the four processors just to uh, help in the same proof. That would be like the last one. This will have the advantage that the finalization of, or at least the, the finalization of the of the batch would be fast, would be faster. But of course, would require more investment. Yeah. Okay. Slashing. When are you slashing? Well, many of you are slashing for two things. First, the 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 operators needs to forge a block, needs to forge a, a batch in each uh, a slot. If they don't forge a batch, they are slashed. They just lose the state. And the other is if they commit to a to a block and they are not uh, forged, so and they do not forge that commit, they are also slashed. That are the two things that they are slashed with. Okay. Here you see the format of the data availability. This is a part of the transaction that we need to reconstruct the full state and needs to be available. And we are putting this on chain. Okay. This is why it's so short. We have only three bytes from the from, three bytes from the two. Here you see the deposit. When you're doing the deposit, you're assigning a number. So you get like, you're doing a kind of logging here. So you get a very, very short address here. Okay? So that shut the address inside. And the two bytes is a floating point style uh, number. So in two bytes, we can put almost any three decimal number, three and a half decimal numbers with uh, from zero to two to the very big number. Okay, so that's that's very important because this is what allows us to do as many transactions in this in this system. Okay, well here is the how the hashes uh, would work. Uh, see all the transactions that we need to hash. We see the on chain hash and the on chain hash because when you are doing a, a when you are forcing a transaction, for example, imagine that you want to force an exit. If you want to force an exit, you will mine a transaction on chain. This will force the operator to mine that transaction. Transactions that are forced on that are put on chain are forced. They are the operator are, uh, have the obligation to to force that. So in that transactions, they are more in a cumulative, a cumulative, uh, a cumulative hash. And for the data availability part, it's just an SHA 256 of the all the data in there. Okay, fees. Fees are. You know, it's a, it's a detail that's important because, uh, yeah, we want to process a lot of transactions. So, how we calculate the fees? We cannot, um, the operator or at, or in chain, in the chain part, we cannot put a lot of logic there. So, we need a more simplistic mechanism. So, what it, it does here is that the operator chooses a fee and then it's uh, able, in that block, will only be possible to mine transactions that the uh, user is willing to pay more than that fee. So then computing how much fee the operator gets uh, rewards is just a multiplication. And in this fee plan, there is also a limit. There is only 15, 15 uh, slots. So you can select 15 different coins, which fee you want to pay for each coin, and then only transactions of that kind will be mined. Okay? Signature verification here. There is, a, I think, here there is a lot of investigation to do. Uh, where, yeah, we are using EDDSA uh, in baby job. We are using the Poseidon uh, hash function. It's a function that's still not well. It's safe. But it's very new. And right now, I know that the, at least the Theo Foundation and other people are running some competitions and trying to break this um, these new uh, cryptographic uh, functions. But they are very efficient and it works very very well. Maybe it's possible to do batching inside the inside the snark. Uh, normal batching of EDDSA would require um, to work uh, with mod with a modular math that's not exactly the one that snark, so it's not as easy as it, it would looks like. But there is some investigation there. But mainly, what we're doing is just a normal EDDSA for each transaction, and this is right now one of the most important uh, consuming in the number of constraints that we're having here in the in the circuit. Okay? Here is, we already talked about on-chain transactions. Yeah, another important thing that uh, the system has is atomic 
atomic swaps. Atomic swaps is our transactions, just that without adding anything on chain, just that uh, you can sign the transaction, that this transaction will be only minor if these other transactions happen. And the same in the other transaction. So this allows to do atomic swaps. This is, for example, for exchanges. This is very convenient for doing this, this kind of atomic swaps. And this is just uh, like an extra field that's signed when you are creating the, the off-chain transactions. And this is done without adding in any extra cost in the on-chain part. Yeah. And, um, well, here I want to talk a little bit about uh, the improvements that we are doing right now. Um, well, we have a full implementation of the proof generation in, a, in, a, in CUDA, in, a, in GPUs, uh, in the BN128. BN um, here is more or less the numbers. It's like, in a, let's say, this is a very round numbers because we are still optimizing and we are still working, but in a soup 10K hardware, uh, we can compute uh, 2048 uh, transaction proof in about 10 minutes. That's our where the numbers that we are working right now. So they are, they are, they are starting being quite wide. Well. There are still some optimizations that we can do. Here we are analyzing, maybe is working with FPGAs and other technologies can be improved in here. It's a matter of uh, speed, cost, complexity. This is very much the part of engineering that we are working very much on. Okay, here is the numbers. As you see, uh, the first line is uh, how much cost. Well, first, the number of transactions that we have in Ethereum right now is about 32 transactions. Here I'm talking just about uh, normal Ethereum transfers. So we have 10 million divided by 21K. Yes, this is 32 transactions per second. Divided by 15, we get uh, the 32 transactions per second that we have right now, normal Ethereum transactions, just to have a reference. If we implement this system in the current chain as it is now, uh, the cost of putting all this uh, data available on chain, this is quite high. You see uh, 2,048 transactions times eight uh, bytes per transaction times 68 gas per byte. That's a total number of uh, one more than one million for 2,000 transactions, okay? So that means that we would be able to put five batches in a block. So that uh, would, would give the, the relative number of about 682 transactions per second, which is not bad, okay? But in the, after the Istanbul, where the proofs of these uh, data bytes in the on-chain plus the, the, the reduction cost of the, uh, of the proof verification on-chain is reduced, doing the same numbers, we would be able to put 15 batches per block, and then the number, the theoretical limit of the transactions, we are talking always about the BN128 core, you know, just without doing any special things, we could go, go to, to reach these limits. Of course, when you are working with this number of transactions, you start having other problems. Right? You need to process 2,000 transactions, the transaction pool are getting more complex, so there you have other difficulties that needs to be solved also there. But that's but not other, the theoretical numbers where we are. And some of you may think that, okay, yeah, but you have to put this um, expensive hardware in order to, it's time again. So, okay, let me move forward. Let me move forward. But just, yeah, the cost of the hardware should be less, if you do the vision, it's less than one, one, one set, okay? So here are a set of tools that we're working in in, in, in IBM3. We have a, we are Circom, Circom Leap, and I know many of you are here. Here is uh, the Kudas Arcs. A lot of things is working, is, is going in this place. Uh, of course, we are still working in the identity protocol. This is just a specific part of the identity protocol. I don't know if you have seen here, but we're running this game for just verifying all this uh, kind of trusted network. You see some, some papers here. If you want to play the game, that's up to you. That's a nice, um, fun game to play. And so, yeah, we want to release the, we want to release also the, 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 no, the, we want to release all, all, the, all the API for the identity and all, all, the, all the stuff. And we are working very hard also in the rollout and we hope that in the next weeks we will be in the, in the, in the testnet. That's very much.